Welcome to this video on S2. Today we're going to be looking at mean and variance of a binomial distribution and this is unit 1.3. Now I'm not going to go through where you get the mean and variance, okay? That is described to you in your textbooks and there's plenty of sources online that if you're interested in it can help you. What I'm going to do is state what you need and then how to kind of use it. So first things first, our mean. Now, this is sometimes written as E of X or mu. Okay, those are the symbols that we use all the time. And for binomial distribution, it is NP. Now, the variance... This is VAR of X, which is a lowercase sigma squared. Obviously, if we square root this, we get our standard deviation. And this is NP multiplied by 1 minus P. Now, in this example, you can see we've got our distribution here. We're going to find E of X and variance of X, so mean and variance. So our E of X is just NP, so that's just going to be 12 times 0 0.4, which will be 4.8. Our variance of X is NP multiplied by 1 minus P, so it's 12 times 0 0.4 times 0 0.6. Oh, it's the, the mean times 0 0.6 in this case as well. And that gives me 2.88. So very straightforward there, finding the mean and variance of this one. Now, in my second example, I've got distribution here, but I don't know what the probability is. But I've also been told what the variance is. So if I go ahead and work out the variance, or how I would work it out, it's going to be NP 1 minus P, which is 10P 1 minus P. And that's going to be equal to 2.4, isn't it? Or I'm just going to pop it on the other side there. So I can go ahead and I could divide by 10 or expand my brackets, but essentially that's what I'm doing. I'm going to be solving, aren't I? So we've got 10p squared minus 10p minus 2.4. Sorry, that's obviously a positive 2.4, isn't it? And then what I will get here is that p is equal to 0 0.6 or p equals 0 0.4. And I know they're right because they've got to add up to 1, haven't they? to be able to be P in that 1 minus P, isn't it? So here we have quite a worded question, but it's very similar to the last one. Probability of obtaining a head when a biased coin is tossed is P, where P is less than a half. An experiment consists of tossing the coin 20 times. So if you think about it, N is going to be 20. P we don't know, but we know it's less than a half. Okay? And it's recording the number of heads we get. So this is my distribution. In a large number of experiments, the variance is found to be 4.2. So variance of X equals 4.2. So very much the same as last time. We've got NP1 minus P equals that 4.2. N is 20, so we get 20P minus 20P squared. And that is going to give me 20P squared minus 20P plus 4.2. And solving this equation gives me that P is 0 0.7 or P is 0 0.3. And since P is less than a half,
then P must equal that 0 0.3. So we are working this out exactly, even though it does say an estimate. It's called an estimate because obviously this is data taken from experiments. Part B, hence estimate the probability that exactly seven heads are recorded during a particular experiment. So here we're trying to find the probability when x is equal to 7. Now I can go ahead and use my tables or I can go ahead and use my formula for doing this. Now if I use the formula, I'm going to get 27 for my NCR. 0 0.3 to the power 7 and then we've got 0 0.7 to the power 13 and that will give me 0 0.1643 for significant figures or four decimal places obviously we generally do everything to three so if I pop it into three then we should get the same kind of answer out of our tables as well and I'll do it the way of the tables so that you can compare so this is you know from our formula but would also be the same if we got it from the calculator as well if you use your function within the calculator now if I was doing it in the tables to get that x equals 7 I would have to do x is less than or equal to 7 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 6 so looking down my 0 0.3 We've got 7 here and 6 just above it. So 0 0.7723 minus 0 0.6080. And we get 0 0.1643. And that's from the tables. And you can see, well, it was exactly what we did get because we did have a 3 on this one. So exactly the same answer, but uh, the three significant figures is what I'd always look because these are rounded to four significant or four decimal places within this table. Okay, and that's the second example, our uh, third example done. Okay, nothing too difficult about this. Have a go now at uh, a few questions coming up, and as always, I'll pop the answers after those questions. Now, part A is fairly straightforward. We know that E of X is NP. We know that E of X is 3.2. We don't know N, but we know P is 0 0.4. So we can just divide by my 0 0.4 and we get eight. Once you've got that, very straightforward. So probability when X equals five, easiest way is to use our formula perhaps for this uh, but equally we could use the tables as well um, 0 0.4 to the power 5 0 0.6 to the power 3 and that gives me 0 0.1239 alternatively and i'll do this one in uh, green shall we and we could use our tables um, and that is less than or equal to 5 minus less than or equal to 4. And you can see that 5 and 4 are here. So 0 0.9502 minus 0 0.8263. And we get exactly the same answer, 1, 2, 3, 9. Okay. Just remember though, sometimes when you do use the tables, 
it will be accurate to three significant figures, but sometimes you could be slightly out to the fourth because these are obviously rounded values within the tables. And C, part C, very straightforward here. Easiest to use the tables. X is less than or equal to two. So it's gonna be this one. So 0 0.3154. Nothing too difficult here at all. Now, for this first one, we know that the probability where x is greater than or equal to 1 is equal to 0 0.83193. And that means that we're looking at 1 minus the probability where x equals 0, isn't it? So this is the same as this. So 0 0.83193. So swapping these around, we've got the probability where x equals 0 is equal to 1 minus 0 0.83193 or 0 0.16807. Now, when x equals 0, this is going to be n is 5 and that x value is 0, isn't it? We don't know p, but it's going to be p to the power 0, 1 minus p to the power 5. This is what we've got, and that of course equals 1, 6, 8, 0, 7. So what I want to do here is simply take the fifth root, isn't it? Or let me write this out again a little bit more. So this is what we've got, 0 0.16807, as this is 1 and this is 1. Then I want to take the fifth root of this. And that actually gives me 0 0.7. So I get 1 minus p equals 0 0.7. Therefore, p equals 0 0.3, isn't it? Now, alternatively, n equals 5 is in my tables. And here we have it, n equals 5. We've got here, you know, our x equals 0 is equal to the 16807. To four decimal places, this is 1681. So if I look across at x equals 0, we can see here at 0 0.3, it's 1, 0 0.1681. So we could have got p from here. Okay, it's not always possible. From the tables because not every value of n is in the tables but the tables can give you that a little advantage sometimes to speed things up i would say though if you've worked it out from the tables because you're you know you're working out would only be to here if you've worked it out from the tables then you know at this point you'd be going p equals 0 0.3 from the tables just to state to the examiner, you know, after this point you went to the tables and that's where you got your answer from. Now part B and part, uh, so just part B isn't it, for the mean of X. These are now quite straightforward. It's just NP, which is just gonna be five times 0 0.3 or 1.5. And the variance of X is NP times 1 minus P. We've already worked out NP, haven't we? So that is just times by 0 0.7, and it's 1.05. And there we have the third question complete. Now, in this question, we don't know N or P, but we are given the mean and we are given the variance. So that's where we obviously need to start. So we know the mean is 4.8, and we know the mean is NP. So NP equals 4.8. We know the variance is equal to 2.88, and the variance is NP 1 minus P. Now, since we know what NP is, we can just substitute this 4.8 straight into this question here. Okay, so if I'm going to call this 1 and 2, I'm subbing 1 into 2. 
So that gives me 4.8, 1 minus P equals 2.88. And divided by 4.8, I get 0 0.6. Therefore, P must be 0 0.4. Now that I've got that, I can go back to equation 1. And we have 0 0.4 N equals 4.8. And then I just need to divide 4.8 by 0 0.4, and I get 12. And there I've worked out my n and my p, just simple, simultaneous equations. Now, the worded question here, we've got the disease occurs in 2.5% of the population, so that's going to be my probability. Find the probability of exactly two people, x equals 2 and n is 10. So if I think of my binomial, n is 10, we get 2.5%, which is 0 0.025, and we are trying to find when x equals two. So again, you know, for this one, you wouldn't use the tables because this probability isn't gonna be in the tables, is it? 0 0.05 is the smallest value in that table for the probability. So this one, I would be using the formula. So we've got 10 NCR2, we get 0 0.025 to the power two. And then we've got one minus that, which is 0 0.975, and that's gonna to be to the power eight. And this will give me 0 0.0, 22968 and so on. And if I do this to three significant figures, we'll get 0, 0230 there. And that's part A complete. Part B says find the mean and variance of the number of people with the disease in a random sample of 120 people. So this time, We've got n is 120, our probability is still the same. So mean is of course np, so 120 times 0 0.025, and that gives me three. And my variance is, don't forget, np1 minus p. Remember, you know, you're probably wondering why am I still writing these out? I write them out purely because the more times you write them, the more you remember them. So if you do this every question, you won't have to learn these, because by the time you've done all the questions in S2, you would know these all off by heart. Um, sorry, so that's three times our 0 0.975. And that gives me 2.9 to five for my variance. And that's it with these questions. Although I would say for part B, it would have been slightly better because we've got a different value of N to use a different uh, variable. So, you know, it would be nicer to kind of, instead of using X to use Y, that would be the, the kind of more appropriate Thing to do here. So I just swap them around just so you can see. Um, it shouldn't really affect your your marks or anything like that in an assessment, but uh, you know, changing up our distribution slightly, we should really change the value of the letter that we're using. Hopefully, you found this video useful. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment down below. You know, let me know what you thought. Let me know if there's anything that you didn't understand. And come back soon as we move on to the Poisson distribution, chapter two.